are a lot of debates that have raged throughout Guitar World for all of history. Single coils versus humbuckers, active pickups versus passive pickups, Marshall amps versus Vox amps versus Fender amps, on and on and on. But though there's so many of them, almost none of them have been quite as hotly debated or have gone on for quite as long as the debate between Gibson guitars and Fender guitars. Now there are a ton of differences between these two guitar manufacturers, everything from the pickups they use to the wood they use in their body, the construction they use when making their guitar, they're about as different as they could come. But one of the biggest differences and the most observable for you as a player is the scale lengths that they employ in their guitars. But while you've probably heard of scale length or seen it on a spec sheet somewhere, you might not necessarily know what this really means, not just in terms of what it means on the guitar itself, but what it means for you as a guitarist, how it changes the way that a guitar sounds, the way that a guitar plays, the way that the strings impact your tone, all that good stuff. So today we're gonna dive into scale length and talk about the differences between the most common versions of scale lengths and how those affect your own guitars. Believe it or not, Fender has actually used a number of different scale lengths over the course of their history as a company for different models or different purposes. You have things like the Duosonic that only have a 22 and a half inch scale length. You have instruments like the Jaguar that use a 24 inch scale length. And of course, some wild baritones and things like that that have really, really long scale lengths. But those exceptions notwithstanding, the most common scale length people are talking about when they're talking about a Fender scale length is a 25 and a half inch scale, like you see on Telecasters and Stratocasters like this one. Likewise, Gibson has used a lot of different scale lengths over their time as a company as well. You have everything from like a 23 and a half inch scale on the Birdland up to a 25 and a half inch more Fender style scale on the Les Paul long scale, if you can believe that. They're actually kind of rare and hard to find. I would love to play one. I've heard differing reports from different people. But all that notwithstanding, when people are talking about a Gibson style scale, what they're generally talking about is what you see right here on this Epiphone. It's a 24 and three quarter inch scale length. One of the least known facts when it comes to guitar scale length is that the Gibson scale length has actually varied quite a bit over time. It always stays right around 24 and three quarters, but it's gone anywhere from 24 and five eighths uh, down to 24 and nine sixteenths, depending on the area you're talking about, what equipment they're using, and all that sort of good stuff. But in general, when we're talking about Gibsons, we're talking about this 24 and three quarter inch scale. Now in the face of it, you might be looking at these two numbers and thinking, well, there's only like three quarter inch difference. Does that really, really make a difference in terms of how the guitar plays? Does it actually affect things or is it just a bunch of snake oil that people talk about to say why one guitar is a whole bunch better than another? Well, it actually does have an effect on your guitar as we're going to get into. Now real quick, before we get into all the differences that these scale lengths have on how your guitar sounds and plays, let's talk about what scale length actually is. It might seem pretty obvious when you hear the term scale length, you think that it's the overall length from the nut all the way down to the bridge. And that's right, sort of. See, the thing is, on almost all guitars, you have an adjustable bridge. And even if you don't have an adjustable bridge and you have an acoustic or something like that, chances are your bridge is still slanted a little bit. What that means is that the individual lengths of every individual string on your guitar are a little bit different. Uh, this is kind of like you see in multi-scale guitars or something like that. It's actually always the case, even on traditional guitars, you have a little bit more length on your lowest string typically, and then you get a little bit less length as you go up. This exists mainly so that you can intonate strings. Every string requires a slightly different length in order to intonate properly. So we have things like adjustable bridges that enable us to make a string a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, whatever it needs in order to intonate perfectly so that your 12th fret note is exactly an octave up above your open note. But if all these individual string lengths is different, which one is it that's actually giving us our overall scale length? Well, it's actually none of them. Well, it might be one of them depending on how it's all set up, but in general, it's not looked at that way. We actually are looking at things from the 12th fret to the nut. So the way to actually get the scale length of a given guitar is to take a tape measure or a ruler or anything like that, and then measure from the edge of your nut down to the 12th fret. In this case, we're gonna get a measurement of 12 inches and three eighths. When we double that, that's when we're going to get 24 and three quarters, and that's where our measurement comes from just for posterity so we can ensure that we're actually right about what we're talking about. We'll do the same measurement on this fender here. Yep, exactly. And that's 12 inches and three quarters, which again, we double and we get 25 and a half inches. So that's how the scale length is actually measured. Again, just because things can be a little bit variable at the bridge end, we don't look at it there. We just look at the distance from that fret to the nut. 
Now, an interesting little side note about this, if it seems like a coincidence that your 12th fret is exactly halfway from the nut to the bridge, it's not. In general, if you take a vibrating string and you keep the tension and all that the same, and you have its length, it will resonate an octave above where it typically is. And so that's why we have the guitar set up that way where the 12th fret is gonna be exactly the halfway point. And if you did have a 24th fret, uh, like you have on some guitars, certainly not this one, that would also be halfway between the 12th fret and the bridge there. The first thing that changes, and it's probably the most prominent um, for you as a player, is that the string tension is going to change in your guitar when you change the scale length. If all things are equal, if you have the exact same gauge of strings and same brand of strings and all that sort of good stuff, uh, and you have your guitar tuned to the exact same notes, if you have a longer scale length, you're gonna have more tension. And if you have a shorter scale length, you're gonna have less tension. If you're not super familiar with tension, we talk about it a lot on this channel, um, but the quick primer is, if you have more tension, that generally is going to mean that it's gonna take more force to fret a note, it's gonna take more force to bend a note. So you're gonna to have to work a little bit harder to do the same things. Whereas if you have less tension, it's gonna be easier to bend, and gonna be easier to fret notes. The second thing that changes is the distance between every fret on the guitar. Uh, here on this Fender, we have quite a bit more distance between every individual fret than we have on an Epiphone or a Gibson style scale length. Just like we talked about earlier, if you want to play a note that's an octave higher than your open string, you need to reduce that string's length by half. As a result, if you have a longer uh, scale length, then that sort of stretch is going to be longer. So that distance between the 12th fret and the nut is going to be longer. And thus, every individual fret in between there is going to be a little bit further apart than it will be on a shorter scale length. Now this really comes down to taste. If you have smaller hands or you just really like moving really fast across the fretboard, um, having a shorter scale length can give you a great way to be able to get a lot of mobility. You can stretch a lot further on the fretboard than you could on a longer scale length, and you can slide from note to note with a little bit less movement and a little bit less effort. Conversely, if you have really big hands or you just like to be a little bit more precise with hitting your individual notes, having broader or wider uh, distances between your frets gives you more room to work with, and especially if you have bigger hands, uh, it makes things a little bit easier to, to get everything fit in and play more tight melodies and tight parts um, without jumbling up your fingers all over one another. Now the third thing that changes when you adjust your scale length is the action of your guitar. Well, kind of. So you can set the action to be the exact same on a 25 and a half inch scale as you can on a 24 and three quarter inch scale, at least in theory. What does change is sort of the range of available actions that you can set your strings at, if that makes any sense. Basically, when you have a longer scale and you have more tension on your string, that string at the same pitch is going to vibrate a little bit less widely than it would on a shorter scale length. A good way to think of this is if you're familiar with like a wave, the distance between you know, the peak and the trough of the wave is known as the amplitude. That range is gonna be a little bit tighter when you have a longer scale length and a little bit wider when you have shorter scale lengths. What that means is that, all things being equal again, on a longer scale length, if you have your string a little bit closer to the frets, it might not hit those frets and cause buzzing the way that it will on a shorter scale length. So if you love really, really tight action, like action really, really low to the frets, what's really, really easy to play, going with a longer scale length, almost surprisingly to some people, will actually give you the ability to get even lower to your frets without getting that dreaded fret buzz. The fourth and final thing that kind of changes when you adjust scale length like this is the actual tone of the instrument. The weird thing about this is that it's really, really hard to get an apples to apples comparison. If I play this P90, you know, hollow body uh, Epiphone and compare it to a Fender, it's gonna sound way different for a host of reasons that have nothing to do with the scale length. But if we try to isolate for that and look at a bunch of different guitars that have different characteristics and see what kind of groups them all together, what we generally see is that shorter scale lengths have a little bit more of a warm tone. They have a little bit less clear of overtones and can sound almost a little bit muddier to some ears. Not in a bad way necessarily, just in general, that's kind of how the sonic characteristics fall out. Even though you won't really be able to tell the difference, because I know a lot of people are gonna tell me, why didn't you play the two of them and compare? I'll play this one real quick. Now on a longer Fender scale, generally what people talk about is that you get more of a strong sort of bell-like tone and you have a little bit of a clearer, tighter bottom end. Again, because usually you're seeing these guitars with Strat pickups or Tele pickups that are way, way, way different than a humbucker pickup or something that you'd see on a shorter scale length, it can be really, really tough to actually get these comparisons and, and really be able to tell 
um, clear as day. But it's still generally there when we look at a number of different guitars. We see that these slightly longer scale lengths have those more rich bell-like tones and more clear overtones. <laughs> Sorry for the change of scenery, we had the longest train in the world going by the front of our shop, so I moved to the back where it's a little bit quieter. But I had a couple more notes real quick before we wrap up. One is, what do you do if you have guitars at these different scale lengths and you want them to play a little bit more evenly, play a little bit more like one another? Um, well, the best trick that I've found is to go about a half gauge different uh, in gauge from one to the other. So for example, if you have uh, a Les Paul or any sort of Gibson style scale length and you have a set of 10s on it and you absolutely love those, I recommend going with something like a set of nine and a halfs on your Strat or your Tele or whatever to balance out that tension a little bit more. Obviously, there's still gonna be some different sonic characteristics um, present on these different instruments, but this will kind of bridge the gap a little bit uh, and help you get things like the action a little bit closer to where you want it, uh, things like the sonic characteristics to be a little bit more similar between them, assuming again that everything else is equal. Now, if you came to this video hoping I was gonna tell you which one was best, I can't do that. Both of them are really good. There's been a lot of awesome players that have used each one of these different scale lengths, a lot of players that use both of them, and I'm sure there's tons of players out there too that use both and can't really tell a huge difference between them because even though there are differences, they can be a little bit subtle. So I'm curious to hear what your favorite scale length is down in the comments. Do you love one of these? Do you use both? Do you use something like a 25 inch PRS scale that's kind of in the middle or a really long 27 inch scale or whatever? Let us know down in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what it is that you love. For me personally, I use both. I like them both. They both have different things that I like about them. And for me, I always find having a lot of variety in my guitar closet. Um, gives me a lot of different paintbrushes to paint with, and that works really well for me.